This is an impulse heat sealer I just bought recently, and it's available in various sizes, usually going up in 100mm, which is roughly 4 inch increments. So this is the 200mm one, and it's rated 300 watts. And I've measured the power, and it does indeed draw 300 watts. What actually happens with this is it's got a heating element underneath a sort of flexible uh, heat proof, what they call a Teflon strip. And on the other side of the spring loaded handle, it's got a silicon rubber strip on a aluminium bracket and it's spring loaded to provide a, a good even pressure. And when you swing this down, it activates the heating element and then a timer cuts out and then you open it up and the plastic you put in there will be joined together. It doesn't feel that hot, but during the actual sealing cycle it seems to be enough to fuse the plastic. So things it works with. I've tried. These are the little bags I supply with my kits in, and normally I fold them over and staple them. But if I put them into this, and you give it a second after you've done it, then it seals them tightly. It seals them to the point that the plastic will fail before the actual bag will open. And the same for this style of plastic. You can actually see the line it makes across it. And um, that, again, will generally, actually, the plastic will tear at that point before that actually bursts apart. It's just stretching. Another one which is useful is these are the anti-static packets. And um, it seems to have no problem actually um, sealing those as well. And you can actually see it creates almost like a, a clear line. You can actually see it when you hold it up to the light that there is a almost like a transparent line through the metallization because it's joined the two sides. And again, it produces a very tight um, seal, which is very, you just can't tear that open. Well, I've just torn it open. But it's, you know, it's actually delaminating the actual surface on the plastic inside is splitting into multiple layers. Well, that's quite interesting. Oh, it is. It's formed. It's forming multiple layers inside. That's interesting. I didn't know about that. I'm gonna have a wee investigation of that afterwards. And once I've got this, um, I realised afterwards that when I was doing the tests with the ferric chloride etching the circuit boards, and I've got that Sino GS etch system. And I, if you watched that video, you'll know that I tried to heat it in the microwave, which is not a good idea, with the clip on, and there was some liquid trapped in the clip and it melted the plastic and it perforated at that point. I've suddenly realised that if I buy some of the sleeving, and you can buy it literally by the metre or by the roll, then technically speaking, I can make my own uh, replacement for that. Now, I wouldn't recommend just ripping off the Sino GS system, but if it's not available in your country, then you have access to one of these, then this is probably an option. So I'm going to do actually what they did um, with theirs. It's okay, I'm going to take this to bits. Uh, and I'm going to actually do two sealed areas. Because that way, if the ferric chloride does leak from through one of these seals, then there'll be a warning before it goes through the other one. So yes, right, so uh, that's that made. So I'll give that a go later on. And hopefully not end up with a flood of ferric chloride everywhere. So now... Uh, let's open this. That's the best thing to do. Now, if you consider this as 300 watts, I'll do a little burst of maths first. Oh no, I won't. I'll take this out. If I swing this handle back, because it's quite good, the handle does swing right back for maintenance. And when I swing it back, you can see that the there's a spring under here, under... Where's the other spring? There's a spring... There. One there. And then there's this locking screw that holds it in place, and the, the locking screw is in a slot, so that the, when you apply pressure, it can, it can go backwards and forwards, it can tilt at a variety of angles and accommodate different thicknesses. I've unplugged this now, so let's uh, remove these strips. The heating element is replaceable in these. To replace it, you can either just loosen these, I think they actually recommend take them out. And generally speaking, when you take the replace the element, you also replace this strip of of the material, which I recognise as being sold as a frying mat for your frying pan in Poundland. So when you've taken that out, the heat element is a it's operated at low voltage and it's basically it looks like a stainless steel strip. 
So if I undo this uh, terminal here, it unhooks from the other end. It's just held spring tension. And it looks like a stainless steel strip that's just been spot welded onto these lugs. So um, underneath that is a piece of uh, more of that um, Teflon tape stuff, and then what looks like a bit of tile, almost like linoleum. Hopefully not as best. But then again, you know what? Uh, what I'm uh, China's like. Uh, it's slightly flexible. It looks like a strip of linoleum. I'm not really sure. Uh, that's the, you can see this is a plastic case and that's where they've obviously cut the, the welding sprue off. And these screws are just self-tapped in. I could take them out completely. So um, when putting the, the replacement element in, you just basically sit this bit in, um, hook the element over at the back, like that. Useful to know, actually. And then you have to pull a wee bit of tension on it to get the screw to go in here. And that is it. And this Teflon strip stuff just pokes under there. Might actually be better removing these, or at least uh, taking the screws out a wee bit further. They are curved, uh, so it kind of clamps in. I don't want to take the screws in doubt too much because um, it's uh, going to. It's not ideal when they're yourself tapping into plastic. So is that going to work? Is that going to work? Better feeding it from then, maybe if I'm going to do it this way. Maybe I should just do it the official way and actually take the whole lot out. Uh, uh, yeah, that kind of works. Yeah, that'll do it. And tighten it up again. It does come with a spare heating element and a bit of that, uh, which is handy. And you know, the replacements are only like two quid online. They're, they're really quite cheap. It seems these units used to cost an absolute fortune, but now they, they're cheap. Because, of course, um, there are so many cottage industries, there are so many people running businesses from their own home with the internet. There we are. Splendid. So let's uh, open the bottom of it and see what's inside. Now, if it's 300 watts, I measured the resistance of that and it was just one ohm. And it doesn't feel like there's a heavy transformer in this. So if you consider it's 300 watts, Um, power. Um, power equals I squared R. So I squared, I'll do it in the triangle, it's an easy way to do it, and the R is 1. So when you uh, calculate things in the triangle, it's the, the sort of Ohm's Law triangle, like um, P equals um, IV, um, you would... Um, if you if you do it in a triangle like that, the P equals I times V, but V equals P divided by I, or I equals P divided by V. It's a good reminder. So in this case, it's P equals I squared R. So the 300 watts uh, divide uh, I squared R, uh, I squared, should I say, uh, should be 300 watts divided by 1. So that will be 300. So the current will be root, the square root of 300 which is about 17.3 amps, and it's 1 ohm, so that's going to be about 17 volts at 17.3 amps, and it's going to be, the transformer is theoretically, and I can hear it buzzing, so it does sound like a wound transformer, so it's putting out 300 watts, but about 17 volts at 17.3 amps, and I did poke a meter in there, and open circuit, it measured 24 volts. So I'm wondering if they're using a 24 volt transformer, really absolutely hammering it in this application. Yeah, just make sure this is unplugged. Um, and it's pulling the voltage way down. Oops. So the bottom is a metal plate, and it's got stylish perforated air holes in it. 
probably to let the smoke out from the transformer. Initially I thought it could be an electronic transformer, but um, I can hear it buzzing. So I'm guessing a long transformer under here. Transformer's tiny. I would say that is a 50 volt amp transformer for continuous duty. Hmm, smells transformer. Oh, that's a uh, kind of crude. So we've got the mains come in here. Live goes straight along to an electronic module at this end with some resistors here which suggest a very simple resistive dropper because it's only powered temporarily I think. The neutral is switched through the switch. Um, goes back through the red to the power supply and then these two reds will just be going to the transformer and then the transformer's output will just be tacked onto this bit of metal here um, and then the terminal at the other end for the other end of that heating element. Interesting. And this is just uh, this is a spring that lifts the handle up, and all that happens when you close the handle down is it hits that switch. And uh, as long as you hold it down, it's going to run the unit, but the unit will then cut off in a relay in here. Okay, right, let's get the electronic module off then. Let's unplug that, it's handy, it unplugs. Does it unplug? It's not really willingly unplugging. There it goes. Keyed, which is quite nice. They do this same unit in a metal version, and I'm guessing really it's the same components. Having said that, the plastic seems perfectly well suited to the task, and it does mean they can just um, injection mould it. So here's the electronics. It looks like a single-sided board, I might be wrong. That knob will just be a push-fit knob, I'm guessing. Let's hike that off. It's a push fit knob. Um, actually, you know what? That potentiometer might just be connected with wires in here because I don't see anything coming onto the back of this. So let's uh, take this screw out. The circuitry is going to be super simple. Yeah, the potentiometer is just tacked onto the back. So let's see. Um, I, I think I'm going to have to reverse engineer this right now. I'll be back in one moment. Okay, that didn't take too long. It's quite a simple circuit, as I would have expected. A single-sided circuit board. Um, and here's how it works. The power comes in and gets limited through these two resistors. And they're two 10k resistors, giving a total of 5k. Then it goes through a single diode. And there's a zener here, which is rated 24 volts. Uh, there's a discharge resistor, 10k discharge resistor. And then there's the power supply capacitor here. So that will charge that capacitor up to about 24 volts. I did the maths. Um, I reckon that uh, this power supply will probably work on both 110 and 240, um, although it is just half wave. Um, it, they may just change the resistor value for uh, 110 volts. In fact, let's see, um, 2 watt 10k, it's just marked 2 watt 10k. Maybe it is universal, maybe it will work fine on 100, the lower voltage as well. But anyway, that's how it derives its power supply. Um, the transformer, the LED is just basically connected in parallel with the transformer with a resistor in series, so it's running the LED on AC. Um, I guess it's just one of these ordinary red LEDs and they're just relying on it to going into reverse sort of um, avalanche type mode and only lighting half wave. Also, the 51K resistor would get quite hot, probably, if it was left on continually, but it's only on for as long as the transformer's on, so that's not really a concern. So the 
contact starts off closed, there's a time delay when you actually power this whole circuit up because that's how the whole circuit is activated is when you close the handle down, you supply power to the whole circuit. At all other times it's dead, which is also a good idea. It means it's gonna, it's not going to have any standby current, which is good, uh, and it'll only just go on demand, which also take the strain off these components. So we've derived our 24 volt supply across this capacitor. Then this, capa this capacitor down here is the timing capacitor, 33 megafarad, and it charges through from the positive rail through the 220 kilo ohm pot, the potentiometer in the front of the unit, and a 6 to 8 kilo ohm resistor, which will set the shortest delay time. And that, uh, or should I say that? Oh, yes, it will. It will actually. Yes, it will s select the shortest delay time um, because you won't be able to turn it below that value. Um, the value 220k will determine the longest delay time. If it's turned right round to the full 220k, then it will be the it will take the longest to charge this capacitor. So it charges this capacitor up, and once it reaches the threshold voltage of what looks like a zener, it then drives this transistor um, and turns on the relay. What's odd about the relay is this electrolytic capacitor across the relay itself, which is odd. Um, unless it's the, f I'm not 100 sure actually. The um, z the diode is the reverse uh, back EMF current spike protection for the transistor. When you turn the unit off, any charge on this capacitor um, gets diverted through this diode to the positive rail, which is going to pull down to zero quite quickly because there's a 10k resistor across it, and that's fundamentally it. You turn the power on, it gives it the 24 volt rail, starts charging this capacitor. As soon as the voltage is high enough, it uh, switches on this transistor, which turns on the relay and disconnects power to the transformer. And then when you let go of the handle, it just powers down and resets. So very simple. Um, yeah, they're, they're quite, it's quite a neat device and it seems to work very well. So yeah, neat. Here's another nice feature I've just noticed about this impulse sealer. If you want to replace the electronic module, all you have to do is remove the front three screws, pull the module out, and there's the connector. Just unplug it, plug a new module in, put it in, and put the three screws back in so you don't even need to open the case. That's quite neat. It's, it seems to have... Uh, it's one of these products that has obviously evolved over time. Also note, the earth is actually bonded onto the transformer. That's um, it's all pretty good. Um, it's really quite nicely designed.